Hello and welcome back to my channel. Still feels corny every single time I try and say that. If you're new here, I review and break down disturbing horror novels because I like books better than people. And also I'm lonely and have no one to talk to. So there's that. Today I'm going to talk about three books that I've read in April. How I'm going to structure it this time is I'm going to introduce the book, then I am going to read the summary for the book, and then I will kind of give my opinions on it, and at the end recommend it or not, and rate it out of five stars, objects. I'll find something to rate it out of first book I will be going over is called Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. The summary is as follows. Judas Coyne is a collector of the macabre, a cookbook for cannibals, a used hangman's noose, a snuff film, an aging death metal rock god. His taste for the unnatural is widely known, but nothing he possesses is as unlikely or as dreadful as his latest discovery, a thing so terrible strange Jude couldn't help but reach for his wallet. I will sell my stepfather's ghost to the highest bidder. For a thousand dollars, Jude will become the proud owner of a dead man's suit, said to be haunted by a restless spirit. He isn't afraid. He has spent a lifetime coping with ghosts. An abusive father, the lovers he callously abandoned, the bandmates he betrayed. What's one more? But... What UPS delivers to his door in a black heart-shaped box is no imaginary or metaphorical ghost. It's the real thing. And suddenly, the suit's previous owner is everywhere. Behind the bedroom door, seated in Jude's restored vintage Mustang, standing outside his window, staring out from his widescreen TV, waiting with a gleaming razor blade on a chain dangling from one hand. I rather enjoyed this book. Um, I thought there were some legitimately eerie moments. Uh, for example, there was one scene where Jude was first starting to see the ghost sitting in a chair in his hallway. Um, just sitting, not moving at all. And the others couldn't see him, and at one point Jude has to lead Georgia right past him. Uh, and Jude's trying not to look, and as, and after they pass him, Jude kind of glances back and he sees the ghost just stand up and that's when he reveals his like razor on a chain thing. Um, I know just me s describing it right now doesn't sound like particularly scary or anything but um, because of the way Hill had written it um, it was really like jarring and terrifying uh, at least in my opinion. It was also written in a way that I actually felt sympathy for characters that um, I didn't think I'd be able to. Um, in the beginning, I thought Jude was just some grumpy old hard-ass womanizing scumbag and that Georgia was just some like typical bimbo character. I felt like she could have been replaced at any point. Um, I didn't understand how I was supposed to be invested in these characters, like, at all. Although my opinion of Jude and Georgia didn't really change much at all, I still found myself caring whether or not they lived or died. Um, there was still tension in dangerous situations, and I just had to know what was going to happen next. Side note, I did not know that Joe Hill was Stephen King's son until after I read the book, and was uh, looking, looking at reviews online. I didn't know where to fit that in, I just wanted to mention it. Anyway, my only real complaint is that I wish that the women could have been written with a little bit more complexity. Um, you know, Jessica was a psycho bitch, Anna was spacey and depressed, and Mary Beth was there. Within the first few lines of dialogue, I knew exactly who these women were and what they were about. Um, I just felt like the men had a lot more depth to them. Overall, I had a great time reading this book. Um, if I had to give it a rating, I'd give it three and a half Danny's Breakfast Plates out of five.
and yes, I would recommend it. The next book I read is called The Killing Woods by Lucy Christopher, and the summary is as follows. Ashley Parker is dead, and Emily Shepard's dad is accused of the crime. A former soldier suffering from PTSD, he emerges from the woods carrying the girl's broken body. Gone, he says, and then retreats into silence. What really happened that wild night? Emily knows in her bones that her father is innocent, isn't he? Before he's convicted, she's got to uncover the truth. Does Damon Hill, Ashley's charismatic boyfriend, have the answers? Or is he only playing games with her? The kind of games that can kill. Okay, so I forgot about this book the second I finished reading it. Um, I could have sworn that I fell asleep and missed the big reveal of who the killer was, but I just remembered who it was as I was writing down my notes for this video. Spoilers, Ashley was trash. Uh, trashly, if you will. By the way, we all know a Trashly, right? Comment below if you know a Trashly. Anyway, so Trashly was cheating on Damon with his best friend, and they were playing the choking game, and it went horribly wrong. The end. Another side note, all of Damon's friends call him Damo, and I fucking hate it. If your name is Damon, you don't get a nickname. That's, I don't make the rules. That's just the way it is. Anyway, I like the characters. Um, I liked that the book switches perspectives so you can see where Damon is coming from and you don't just see him as some nonsensical dickhead the whole time. But overall, I didn't find the book particularly interesting. Therefore, I would not recommend it. If I had to rate this book, I'd give it two sparkly pink dog collars out of five. The last book I read this month is called Can Such Things Be by Ambrose Pierce. And the summary is as follows. Prepare yourself for the shocking, the strange, and the terrifying in Ambrose Pierce's 1893 collection. One of the greatest masters of horror brings you 25 tales of the supernatural and unexplained. Whether in stories of ghosts sending desperate warnings to their human counterparts, psychics attempting to bridge unknown dimensions, howling werewolves, or a robot that takes on a life of his own, Fierce plums the depths of fear and fascination. Spooky thrills and mind-bending mysteries await all who dare to open the cover of Can Such Things Be? I thought this book was okay. Um... I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because I'm not super interested in books from the 1800s or around that time period. Don't ask me why I ended up choosing to read this. It was beautifully written, it's just not for me. However, I would recommend it if you uh, don't mind books that are written before 1950. If I had to rate it, I would rate this book two and a half bloody tree stumps out of five. And there we have it, the three books that I read in the month of April. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to read this month, so I've been mainly just listening to the audiobooks here and there, just whenever I have the chance. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, thank you all for checking out my channel, and I hope you guys all have a great week. Bye!